Oh, this is no Dharma Khan here. And the first online conference on algorithms from Mexico. Today, my intention is to give a brief overview on an ongoing research project about traveling salesman's problems. Uh, this project is carried out in collaboration with, as you can see on the slide, with uh, PhD student Victor Pacheco, who is carrying out the main part of this project, including experimental part. And there is another collaborator, another PhD student, Frank Hernandez. Oh, you can see here the title of the talk <clears throat> and um, what was our intention uh, for the traveling salesman's problems was the design of uh, approximation algorithms with a good practical performance which run fast, consume little computer memory and we thought that this is possible because of the nature of the Euclidean version of the paper of the problem, which permits to use some simple geometric considerations during the construction of the solution, and uh, somehow this. Uh, these uh, properties, geometric properties, somehow guarantee that the solution that will be generated should not be bad. And also, it can be obtained in a relatively short time. Uh, so, um, the basic traveling salesman's problem can be described in terms of N objects that are often called cities, clients. But we will use the term points because uh, we are dealing with two-dimensional Euclidean space. And uh, we define a feasible tour that starts from any of the given points, visits all the remaining points exactly once, and returns to the initial point. So this kind of tour is supposed to be accomplished by a salesman in practical terms. Uh, what is the input? Input is an n by n matrix that specifies the distance from city point I to point J or the cost of the travel. Here yeah, we, we denote a feasible tour by t, t, and its cost is represented here. And uh, the objective is to find a feasible tour with the minimum cost. Uh, here are some possible applications of the problem. And uh, what about our uh, our approach. So the first step is to create a girding polygon that somehow bounds the area that is interesting for us in two-dimensional Euclidean space. Uh, another good characteristic of this girding polygon is that it already defines an optimal tour for the set of 
points that it contains. In the solution method that we propose, we use two strategies that we call insertion and inflammation strategies. So insertion strategy is more or less traditional. Uh, how we start with a feasible tour determined by the girding polygon and then iteratively we extend the current partial tour with one additional point that is somehow we using the based on the geometric considerations we consider that <clears throat> this is the best choice currently so it is somehow the closest point and it yields <clears throat> the minimum increase in the cost and with the inflammation strategy we iteratively construct inner convex hulls uh, which are used for the construction of our tours so these are partial tours which are inflammated which are extended iteration by iteration um, let us give this kind of a small example with six cities and here it is not necessary to give explicitly the matrix because we can see the distances in two-dimensional Euclidean space directly. Uh, so how we construct the girding polygon first we determine four support auxiliary vertices that we call V1 through V4. In this example, there are only three such vertices. Three is enough. Uh, and um, then we just join these four vertices or three in this example. So we, we can see here that the initial two are T0 contains these three points which are on the Gooding polygon and the set of vertices which are which remain are covered are here one three and six uh, so <clears throat> what is a general description of the method okay so we uh, first, as we said, construct a partial tour defined by the Gothic polygon. Then we extend this tour iteratively to our first complete feasible solution. And then at phase three, we iteratively try to improve this solution. It's more or less clear standard approach so uh, in this example uh, in order to extend our partial tour which is defined by this girding polygon we have three possibilities vertex one three and six and uh, we calculate the cost of the insertion for each of them and then uh, the minimum cost is given by 0.6 so we include it first then uh, the next one here would be vertex 3 
So we use triangle e equality <clears throat> to determine the cost of, of the inclusion of the next point, yes, at each iteration. So this was minimum was first iteration for six, vertex six, then three, and then the last vertex is included between point six and four. Um, now we use a standard two opt local search heuristic to improve the tour that was constructed on the previous stage. What we do is we try to remove a point from the current, its current position and move it to a new position resulting in a new tour and then uh, we take an option that results the maximum reduction of the cost and we halt when we see that uh, the current cost cannot be further improved. Here we give some, uh, we give the experimental results and here basic uh, achievements say. Uh, so uh, as, as to the quality of the solution that we obtain, it is about in average, uh, it, it gives uh, this, uh, the same approximation gap as the state of the art algorithms. It's about 7%. And uh, at the same time, we were able to improve uh, the state of the art solutions for a few or several problem instances, uh, benchmark instances. Uh, on, uh, at the same time, the proposed algorithm that we have just described is extremely fast. I mean, it's, uh, it's 684 times with, with a rough average S estimation faster than the earlier algorithms. Also, it consumes a little computer memory. Now we turn to the next method that we also use for the same problem, the generic TSP problem, traveling salesman problem, but we call the inflammation method here. We rely on the concept of an inner, inner convex hull. Yes, that consists of points these are yet, I say intuitively, these are yet uncovered points uh, which uh, define a convex polygon and such that the points that we have not yet considered at a given stage, or at a given iteration, all are in the area, uh, in the exterior area of this polygon. Uh, we determine, calculate special kind of point that we call centroid, averaging the coordinates of all the points that is also used in our construction. We give an example here. So uh, here we can see our initial convex hull, well, polygon that includes all these points. There is no other, no uncovered point inside this area. Uh, how it works? Uh, uh, so this method uh, that we call inflammation method starts with a minimum convex hole that we have just seen <clears throat> in the previous slide. Uh, and uh, that immediately defines our initial to our R0. So initial convex hull P0 and partial to our R0, which coincides with P0 here. And uh, then we construct 
And any iteration which follows, we construct in our next at iteration i, we construct our next inner convex hull pi. Yes, and then we somehow merge the tour defined by pi with the tour that we have constructed at the pre previous iteration that, 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 we, that is r i minus 1. So merging this uh, uh, two tours, we have a tour that covers all the points which are in pi in, and e in r i minus 1. Now, here is the brief description of, of the, this method. Yes, this is just what we have just uh, said. Uh, and uh, now, to build a convex hull at each, each iteration, we use a specially determined theta, theta angle which is here. So for this point, the theta angle is determined this way. You're using the x, x axis. So in technical terms, it can be expressed this way. So then um, um, based on this theta angles, we construct the convex hull iteratively also and, uh, and, uh, and on this stage of the construction which is just a fragment of a given iteration so we have here three points and we can see that um, if we add this point then we get an angle which is theta angle which is more than 180 degrees so the corresponding curve will not be will not be convex yes uh, then uh, um, we eliminate one of these three this is uh, the current vertex that we are considering and these are neighbors of these two vertex and the neighbors are determined are determined by first ordering all the vertices according to known decreasing excuse me non-increasing order of their theta angles so um, this vertex is eliminated and we consider the next vertex which is here A among these two vertices we we'll eliminate one which is further away from the centroid so this is centroid right uh, <clears throat> so once we discarded this vertex from the consideration while constructing our convex hull at iteration i, the next vertex in the sorted list according to the theta angles is this vertex. And so we repeatedly check the same condition. And um, in this case, the angle is not more than 180 degrees and and so these three vertices remain in the polygon pi that is constructed at iteration i so this is the a formal description of this procedure and uh, now as we said we join tour R uh, at iteration I, we join tour R of the previous iteration with the convex 
but by the polygon de defined by the convex hull of the current iteration P of the P uh, uh, I, which uh, current iteration I. So what we do here is uh, here we have any point on polygon P, which is P I that we have constructed at duration I, and we want, want to join or include this point P in the tool that we have constructed at the previous iteration, which is here R uh, as a parameter of this procedure. In fact, this is R I minus one. We consider all pairs of adjacent points in tour R and determine and we determine the cost of the inclusion of point P between points X and Y and we select the position or the pair X, Y which results in the minimum cost, yes and so on until all points of polygon P are included in tour Ri minus one that results now we have a new tour of iteration I that includes all these points which are on P and which belong to R. Here is an example illustrating this procedure here are some results now we turn to the bounded multiprocessor version of TSP so in this version we have besides the data basic data from TSP we have especially selected or given point which is called a deep port and now <clears throat> we construct the aim is to construct invisible tours so uh, each tour starts and end at the depot here, here is the depot uh, and um, uh, with the, the bounded version of this problem, there is a limit lower and upper on the amount of points in each tour. So the, the, <clears throat> the lower bound is M min, upper bound is M max. Yes. And these K feasible, K -feasible tours define a complete solution for the BMTSP problem bounded multiprocessor TSP problem and on this example we have three tours constructed this is the depot different colors and union of these three tours define a feasible solution given that mm min is no less than three and mm max here can be can see mb four or five so uh, now we represent each feasible tour this way it starts in the port ends in the port and um, this is a feasible solution that contains all these K tours. The cost is defined similarly as for the TSP problem and the total cost for the solution T is sum of, of these costs, yes. And so the objective is to again is to find feasible tour that minimizes the total cost, which is sum. So in this 
problem, we have to minimize the sum of the costs. Uh, and here, this PCI algorithm that, that, that we call 4M for a bounded MTSP problem, it somehow extends the TSP algorithm, that, the insertion method that we have just described, the first one. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> yeah, the difference is that at phase one, uh, we have to partition the whole set of points. Then at phase two, we construct Visible solution, and uh, again, at phase three, we improve it. Uh, how we carry out the partition, uh, we determine k additional points. Here are these extreme auxiliary points. Uh, these are determined uh, based on the distance from, this, from the D port. And, uh, and then, uh, uh, we construct initial tours, which contain which contain the minimal required number of points. Each of them, each of these tours contain minimum required number of points. Uh, and then uh, we try to extend. So if this solution contains all the points, then it is also feasible. Otherwise, it is not feasible because there are some uncovered points, which are here, these ones. And then what we do is the next, at the next stage, uh, based on some, again, simple geometric considerations, we extend some of these K tours so that the restriction on the maximum number of points in each tour is respected and all the points are covered, so they are included in one of the constructed tours. So this is our first feasible solution. Uh, <clears throat> and then um, we use, uh, once we have this, uh, so in, in fact, this is not a feasible solution, but a, a feasible partition, sorry. And now once we constructed this feasible partition, uh, <clears throat> we construct for each of these partitions, we construct a feasible tour using uh, our earlier described method, insertion method for TSP. And this already results in a first feasible solution. Yes, and then at phase two, similarly as yes. In the case of uh, our first method for TSP, we carry out some kind of an improvement. We select a vertex from one of the tours and try to move that vertex to another tour so that the total cost is reduced as much as possible. So we do not go now into the details of such kind of, of a procedure. We give some experimental results and what are, <clears throat> what is again a summary of the experiments, experimental results is that <clears throat> again, as for the TSP problem, the approximation gap is not larger than 7%. Uh, and um, 
Uh, for several instances, again, we were able to improve state-of-the-art solutions. Uh, we have so far we have tested just 16 benchmark instances, but we plan to generate more, create more benchmark instances by transforming known TSP or MTSP instances to the instances of, for the bounded version of, of the problem. And again, this method is much faster than known ones. So an average rough estimation is 330 sorry, 132 times faster. Uh, so what we can say finally, that on, on one end, um, as, as, as we could see, our method relies on simple, non-extraordinary findings. On the other hand, by combining this simple geometric heuristic considerations, surprisingly, we were able to obtain solutions of uh, a good quality, which are competitive and comparable with the state of the art solutions. And again, so as we have already mentioned, our method, our methods create solutions very fast, much more faster than state-of-the-art algorithms, which are basically generic algorithms, genetic algorithms. Our algorithm oh, obviously is, is, is not a genetic algorithm. Uh, it's just a direct combinatorial heuristic method. And uh, also, as already mentioned, it, it uh, consumes a little computer memory. So thank you for your attention. Enjoy the next talks on the first online conference on algorithms. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.